Against the Houston Texans in week one, Ravens got a lot of penalties called against them. There was a lot of sloppy play, but they were still able to score 25 points and take care of business. Against the Cincinnati Bengals in week two, there were still some tic-tac-y penalties. Uh, there was a little bit of sloppy play, but a lot less than week one. But they were going against a very tough Bengals team. The Ravens were depleted with injuries, but they were still able to overcome that. But in week three, uh, going against uh, a Colts team that had low expectations, a lot of people considered it a trap game, but I was feeling like, oh, no, Ravens going to take care of business in a major way uh they were just not able to overcome it they had so many chances they had so many different opportunities to and yeah they have a long list of injuries right now even raven nation live pointed them all out and listed them all out for us jk dobbins justice hill gus edwards keaton mitchell odell beckham jr rashad bateman tylen wallace tyler Lindbaum, andrew Voorhees, ronnie stanley nick moore marlon humphrey demarion williams trayvon mullen marcus williams Darius washington adafi away david ajabo malik ham tyus bowser wow that is a lot of people hurt but that was not an excuse for yesterday's game you could blame it on the refs if you want to and yes there was some weird calls and toward the very end of the game the refs missed two big obvious calls one was a face mask on zay flowers um that would clear as day and that would have been a penalty that would have offset the ravens penalty because they got called for an illegal block in the back uh, and that brought them back but that the penalties would offset they would have been able to replay the down so that was a missed call and then at the very end when ravens went forward on fourth down uh there was a missed pass interference call on, on zay flowers again uh, that they didn't call so you could blame it on that but that's not an excuse either the Baltimore Ravens had so many different chances to close this thing out but they just simply failed uh, they were their biggest enemy yesterday and that's not taking anything away from the Colts because Colts they took care of business they did their thing uh, but the Ravens they just could not get it done and they had the chances uh, well, let's start off with Lamar Jackson Lamar Jackson had a very weird game yesterday because if you look at the numbers you, you look at the stats Lamar Jackson went 22 for 31 202 yards uh, no no touchdowns but no picks but and you could look at that and be, oh, well, that's solid. And then he had 100 yards on the ground, 14 carries for 101 yards, two touchdowns. So it's like, all right, he scored two touchdowns on the ground. All right, he contributed, whatnot. But the fumbles. The fumbles are still an issue, and they got to get that cleaned up. The fumbles have been happening every game. Every game. And that's a big, big problem. He got to get that taken care of. With Lamar Jackson yesterday, um, the fumbles obviously an issue but then there were some bad passes too and not to say that Lamar Jackson's every pass is going to be perfect because it's not not every pass is perfect from every single quarterback but yesterday there were some missed opportunities big time um, some of the ones that stood out to me the most there was that uh, it was late in the game I don't remember if it was fourth quarter or overtime a lot of the, yesterday's game was a blur um, but where it was a pass where it was a cornerback lined up Zay Flowers was in a slot I believe and there was a cornerback lined up on him but that cornerback blitz so I guess Zay was the hot read and Lamar threw it to him but he threw it behind him now, I don't know if it was just a bad pass, so I don't know if Lamar anticipated Zay Flowers just uh, get, sitting on that first down. I, I, I'm not sure what it was, but it just, he missed him. He, it, it was a missed opportunity. Um, so it, it, was, it was bad. And then with Lamar Jackson, too, uh, it, yesterday was a game where it brought out some bad habits. And one of those bad habits were just holding on to the ball too long, especially in clutch and crunch time. Uh, there was an opportunity where the Baltimore Ravens, they were in pretty good field position. And then Lamar took such a bad sack. I want to say it was in overtime, but it might have been at the very end of the fourth quarter. I, I don't remember. But he took a really, really bad sack. It was that play where he got sacked and then tried to throw the ball away at the last lap, after the last second. Uh, but his knee had already hit the ground. And it was just, it was too late. And, and that was one of them plays where it's like, man, Lamar, we, we got to live to play another down. Because it's not like it was fourth down or anything like that. And, you know, hey, with the pressure, it was coming in a lot yesterday. But still, that's a play that Lamar, you got to throw it away. So that was tough. And, again, he did make some good plays, made some good throws. Uh, but it, it was a lot that was left out there on the field, too. And it just, it was tough. Uh, when we talk about Todd Munkin, with Todd Munkin, 
um, yesterday was again not not his best game either, uh, because the blitz was coming in a lot, uh, and the Ravens just could not get it going. And what the Colts did a phenomenal job of, they were like, Ravens ain't getting no deep passes on us. Uh, we saw it against the Bengals, and like, no, nah, we ain't letting that happen. And, uh, and even a little bit against the uh, the the Texans, but the Colts were like, no, nah, Ravens ain't doing this, and they did not allow any deep passes. There were a couple of shots or whatnot, but. They they took him away, um, and I really thought that uh, with this game, I'm like, and and I've been saying it like it's nice how the Ravens they loaded up this team because you got if your top guy goes out or one of your top guys goes out like Odell Beckham Jr. was out yesterday. I'm like, oh, okay, cool, he's out. Ravens still got it taken care of because they still got all those weapons and whatnot. But those weapons were just. They weren't there. They weren't used. They 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 weren't a factor. Uh, Ravens could never just they could never get it going. Um, Todd Monk in this game, I'm surprised that we didn't see more screens. We saw I remember one of them, but I'm surprised we didn't see more um, because the offensive line they they did definitely struggle uh, in the game yesterday, big time. Um, Sam Mustafa he had uh, he had a low snap that resulted in a fumble. Um, it just contributed to to the fumbles because Lamar had his fumbles already. Then the low snap that didn't help. Um, but the offensive line, they, they were just struggling yesterday. Uh, so that obviously wasn't good. Um, the running game, oh, boy, the running game. It was weird because Gus Edwards early on, he was looking solid as normal. Um, but then they stopped using him, and it was like, huh? And then he came back a little bit, and then uh, he ended up going out with a concussion. It's like, man, Ravens just cannot catch a break for nothing. Melvin Gordon, he was in there, and he did okay. Uh, King and Drake, oh, King and Drake. That was um big momentum shifter right there. I know uh, there were a lot of people blaming King and Drake for the Ravens actually losing the game. No, it was just it was not his fault alone. There were so many contributing factors. Uh, but King and Drake did catch that pass. Got a lot, a lot of nice yak. It was looking good. It was like, all right, Jersey, and then boop, that ball got knocked out, and the Colts recovered it. I said, oh man. And at that point, I was thinking, oh yeah, can that's a wrap for King and Drake. And we talked about how we expected the Ravens to release him because, especially with him being on a practice squad, but. Then they gave him more chances and whatnot, and he did not necessarily redeem himself, but he did do better. He didn't fumble anymore at all, um, but still, uh, with the injury to Gus Edwards, the concussion, and who knows how long it could be because with Anthony Richardson from the Colts, he got concussed last week and didn't play in this week's game. So with Gus Edwards, he got concussed this week, so we'll see if he plays in next week's game. It's still to be determined, um, Just but just another injury on the Ravens' long list of injuries, and Again, we, it, it, it's, it's, it's such a long list, and it just it doesn't make any sense to me how they continue to get injury after injury after injury after injury after injury. I don't know what it is. I don't know what's going on, but it's it's sloppy. Uh, I mean, it's not sloppy. It's just it's weird. It's weird. The game yesterday was sloppy. Um, some moments from the game. Uh, the the kick the kick after the, the after Gardner Minshew stepped out of bounds and the safety I'm, I'm thinking like oh yeah yeah Ravens got this in the bag baby it wasn't over but I'm thinking oh yeah yeah Ravens gonna take care of business and it's about to be over um, Harbaugh said that there was a miscommunication he said that initially uh, when they when the Colts were doing a free kick that uh, they told Zay Flowers, hey, just fair catch it because it was after the two-minute warning. But then Harbaugh said, oh, then they added some time to the clock, and uh, it was before the two-minute warning. But he said they didn't have enough time to communicate that with Zay Flowers uh, because I was wondering when he caught, when he did a fair catch, and I'm like, why didn't he just run out those last couple of seconds and what to take it to the two-minute warning? Um, but right there, that's a lot of people saying, oh, rookie mistake, rookie mistake. That's on Harbaugh. That, that, that part right there, that's on John Harbaugh because there was a time in the game where they did have good situational awareness where it was when the Colts was, I think it was late in the game. I don't even remember when in, in the game it was exactly, but the Colts, they lined up to kick a field goal. And when they lined up to kick a field goal, it was on a fourth down, obviously. They lined up to kick a field goal, but then they did this mass substitution where they brought the offense on the field and they were, they were looking like they were going to go for it. Harbaugh was like, no, 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 we're not ready for this. I'm calling a timeout. Because we just weren't prepared for that. It's like, okay, Harbaugh, good job calling the timeout in that situation because you wanted to make sure you were prepared and you were ready. 
So then the very next play, they came out like they were going to run a field goal, and they did the exact same thing again. They did this mad substitution, but Ravens also did a substitution, and then the Colts got a delay of game, uh, and that forced them to kick a field goal. And that kicker, uh, I think Matt Gay, uh, but he he that boy was a, a baller yesterday. That dude was kicking him. I think he had four field goals over 50 yards, something like that. It was crazy, man. He did a phenomenal job yesterday. But anyway, Harbaugh had great situational awareness on that play, but – in the play with Zay Flowers, it's like, hey, if if you need to communicate something to Zay that's going to be game changing, call a timeout. Call a timeout. It was at the very end of, of is very close to the end of uh, regulation, and you're in control. Your team just went up three points, and you're about to get the ball back because they just got a safety. Call a timeout and, and get it under control so he knows exactly what to do because those three seconds, those were precious three seconds that could have made such a big difference, a, a huge difference when it came to the time and the clock management and whatnot. So that right there uh, was on John. John Hubble. Um, but again, this was a collective effort. It was a collective effort of a loss by everybody. Um, likely, Isaiah Likely. Oh, man, it reminded me of Anquan Bowden uh, in the playoff game against the Steelers in, I want to say, 2010. I think it was 2010, but anyway, I don't remember what year it was. I know y'all remember what year it was when um, Flacco, he threw it to Anquan Bolden. He threw a touchdown to Anquan Bolden. Now, this wasn't a touchdown to Isaiah Likely, but it was a perfect pass, hit him right in the chest, and, and Anquan Bolden just dropped it. And I was like, oh, man. And it also reminded me of that, that same game with uh, TJ Hushmanzada, uh, where it was the fourth and I think fourth and 11, the very end of the game. Flacco hit TJ Hushmanzada right in the chest, and he, he dropped it. But anyway. Um, this play to Isaiah likely reminded me of that because Lamar hit him and it was for a first down. It was a big first down. Uh, and he hit him and Isaiah likely just dropped it. He dropped it. And I said, oh, man. Oof. It hurt bad. It, 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 it really hurt bad. Um, with Zay Flowers in yesterday's game, uh, he... He was making a lot of smart plays. We're talking about pass catching now. Zay Flowers was making a lot of smart plays because something that I noticed from him throughout the entire game, which was a big positive, uh, he would catch the ball, and there would be two defenders around him. And instead of trying to go around the defender and possibly lose yards trying to make them miss, uh, he would – go forward he would make sure he always went forward instead of losing yards and I guess he realized like man this is a tough game uh we it's, it's a struggle for yards right now so let me do everything that I can possibly do to get positive yards whenever I got the ball in my hands and I really appreciated that from Zay Flowers because those were some those, those were some good moves uh Zay Flowers had eight catches for 48 yards um Nelson Aguilar he had four catches for 39 yards he had some nice tough 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 catches um and he was out there trying man he was out there trying, so I, I give it to him. Mark Andrews, I thought that he was going to have a louder game to, today or yesterday, but he only had four catches for 35 yards. They they took care of business against him. They took care of business against really everybody. Um, Melvin Gordon, he had a couple of catches. Drake had a couple of catches. Isaiah likely he did have that one big catch, but, yeah, that drop. Uh, Rashad Bateman. Rashad Bateman, extremely quiet game. Uh, I hadn't even – I don't even remember when he got that one catch for six yards. I don't even remember, but Rashad Bateman, he – they said – he had a hamstring injury after the game, and that's unfortunate because hopefully it's nothing. Rashad Bateman, I know he tweeted out, he's like, I ain't going to let all the negativity, all your negative people get to me this, this time. It ain't, ain't going to work. Uh, so hopefully he will be healthy moving forward. Uh, but he was very quiet, very quiet. I even jo I, I joked around like uh, during the game, during the live stream. I said, hey, they, they better get Rashad Bateman involved or else he's going to request a trade, man. But Rashad Bateman was really quiet uh, in the game. Um, but the, the – this is just a sloppy game, sloppy, sloppy game for the offense as a whole, uh, for coaching. Uh, it was it was sloppy. But defense, see, with defense, they 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 shared in the the wealth of sloppiness a little bit, like giving up a, a 122 yards to Zach Moss. They set, they had a problem setting the edge all game long. Big problem. The runs up the middle, they were holding that down for the most part. But it was those runs to the outside where they just they couldn't do it. They could not do it. They could not contain him. And that's where Zach Moss was getting most of his big breaks. Uh, but even still, even with that, and, and uh, Zach Moss, he did Moss Patrick Queen too. Uh, so that play was like, ooh, he, he called him nasty. They, and they had got pressure on Gardner Minshew on that play too. But Gardner Minshew did a good job and threw it up. And that was that. But even with all that being said, I just, 
I can't put this on the defense. I can't. I cannot put this on the defense. Yeah, they did have their mistakes, obviously. They did have their hiccups, but I cannot put this loss on them because they continue to hold it down time after time after time after time after time again. They really did, and they were doing overall a good job. Yeah, they were giving up some stuff here and there, but they they did enough for the Baltimore Ravens to win. Even in overtime, they gave the offense a chance to win. They gave them opportunities to win. Offense just didn't take it. Offense just had the defense keep coming back out there over and over again. And we hate to see that. You, you, you hate to see that, especially a game with Kyle Hamilton. It's like a defensive player of the year type of game. The man had the three sacks, had some tackles for a loss, had a bunch of tackles, had a forced fumble, had a pass deflection. Kyle Hamilton, that was a defensive player of the year type of game. But it, it all goes not necessarily for nothing, but it's a loss. It's, it's a loss. And that's got to be deflating. And you could see, uh, I remember the point in, in the overtime when you could just see that the Ravens were just deflated, especially on defense. They were, they were deflated. Uh, and I think especially after that, uh, the fourth down where they went for it and they didn't call the pass in the fin- they they were done. They were done, and you would hope that they could get a stop, and then they did end up getting a stop, but then it was a long field goal, but it was a field goal that was in the range of Gay, and, and he is making those all day. And Justin Tucker, Justin Tucker was just, no, it, it, and the conditions were a little ugly, but Justin Tucker, he was off too. It was off, off. So, again, everybody contributed, man, even though those were some long field goals, but it was the ugly. Justin Tucker, because we got these high expectations for JT, super high expectations for Justin Tucker, but – he he was he was missing. So and again the conditions were the what the conditions were, but it's still, it's still Justin Tucker. So you're like, oh yeah, but Gay was making him, but Tucker just he couldn't get that long one. But he did make he did make one of the long ones. But um it was just an off game for the Ravens, just everywhere. Everywhere. Um Brandon Stevens, um, just thinking about him. There were he did make some plays. That, ah, there was one play where I, I loved it because he had stripped the ball out of there, stripped the ball out of there on a deep pass that Gardner Minshew threw up. Um, but then there was another play toward the end of the game where he same thing. He he tried to strip the ball out of there. He was in position, but he just could not make the play. Michael Pittman Jr. caught it over him. Um, so it, it it was a struggle game, man. Uh, this game definitely uh, made me miss Marlon Humphrey uh, a lot more uh, than we already had. Um, just made, made you miss everybody uh, because while I did say earlier, the, the injuries were not an excuse for the Baltimore Ravens with this game. They were not. They weren't at all. They were not an excuse. But uh, with the end, with if you got some of those guys healthy, I feel like they could have made uh, a difference. That they they could have made a, a significant difference here and there. But the Ravens, they just they got to be better, man. And I mean that's so easy to say, but they they have to be uh, much much better. Um, they all contributed to this loss. They cannot continue to give games away like this. They cannot continue to be sloppy. One thing that I will say. It is much better that this something like this is happening now, uh, early on in the season, because you don't want it to be happening late in the season. Um, they got to get the turnovers cleaned up, though. They, they cannot continue to just give the ball away. They cannot continue to donate the ball uh, with these fumbles. They got to get it cleaned up. And that's Lamar Jackson. He got to get the fumbles cleaned up for sure. Uh, pass protection. Pass protection. We know that we're working with backups. The two of these guys are not starters. And last week's game. Last week's game was great against the Cincinnati Bengals. They did an amazing job. There was still some times where they let some pressure in, but overall they did an amazing job. Uh, but this game, they just they, they couldn't hold it. They, they couldn't hold up like they did last game. Uh, so that contributed to the loss too. And just Ravens not taking advantage of opportunities, miscommunications. Uh, this stuff has no choice but to improve. As the season goes on and has no choice but to get better uh, as the season goes on. But it's going to take them just doing a little extra, a little extra than whatever they're doing now. It's going to take them doing that much more work than whatever it is they're doing now. But the Ravens should be able to take care of business. I do not think that all, right, all of a sudden, oh, well, this team, they're not a Super Bowl team since they lost to the Colts. No, losses happen. Upsets happen. 
They 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 happen all the time uh, to different teams, to some of the top teams, to some of the low. It, it it is what it is. It's any given Sunday. But Ravens certainly they know what they need to clean up. We know a lot of what they need to clean up, and it's important that they take aggressive action and getting it done. Cause this game was not that.